Hello, welcome back to Stellaris. Let's think. Ah, yes, so I was busy trying to get my economy sorted out because I was in the debit with energy credits. That's right, I do remember. So I was thinking about where I got to last time and how things look on the galactic map that I know of, um, which is these these four different uh, alien empires, the Hifnar Sovereignty, the Sildari Confederacy, and the Agarian Dynastic Union. Uh, oh, and the, the Hijam Alliance, they've got a little dude swallowed up in the middle of them there. Sibylan Confederacy. So we've got these um, defensive agreements going on. So these guys have a defensive pact with the Hifnar Confederacy and me. Um, so the Hifnars have got a defensive alliance, again, of course, with the Sildari and with the Hijam. And the Agarians stand alone. So, in theory, there could be a huge war if I were to declare war. So we're perhaps setting things up for an almost end game scenario. Not the scenario that will end the game, but the scenario that will start the end game process certainly. So if I were to declare war on the Hifnars, I'm gonna end up at war with the Sildaris and the Hijams as well. Same effect, declare war on the Hijams. If I declare war on these guys, the Sildari, I'll just be at war with them and the Hifnar sovereignty. But I can't declare war on them because I'm in a defensive pact. I'm going to break our defensive pact. I still can't declare war on them for a while. So it may be worth thinking about how we're going to do this. So if I wanted a sort of constant war scenario, I could first declare war against the Agarian Dynastic Union and take them over. Following that, I could declare war against the Sildari Confederacy, which would force me into war with them and the Hijams. And I could defeat the Sildari Confederacy in that war then I wouldn't be able to declare war against the Hijams for 10 years, but I could declare war against the Hifnars, which would force the Hijams back into the war, and then I could conquer either them or the Hifnars. Then I could declare war against these guys, whoever they are, the Sibylan Confederacy, if they're not already part of the Hijam Alliance as a, as a battle. And then after the peace treaty passes, I could declare war against the Hifnars. Honestly, that war's not gonna take me 10 years. But it means I could use those defensive alliances to get around some of the time limits that are imposed upon you for peace treaties and force the galaxy into a state of almost constant war for about 30 or 40 years, which is a great opportunity for me to smash up some empires and snap up some territory. That seems like a good plan. So the Agarians are going to be my next target, and they're much weaker than me, as far as I know. Oh, they're equivalent. I thought they were weaker than me. Nevertheless, my next target, they are. But before I do that, I still do have some work to do in boosting the economic strength of my planet. Because they're not as good as they could be. And there's no point going to a war if it's got a bank with me. Bizarrely unhappy because he's an egalitarian. It's probably because the majority of his race is enslaved.
rich planet. Do we have any energy rich planets within our upper world? Three foodie planets. Honestly not seeing many. Emperor died. We've got a new emperor. Another very good emperor, but new emperor nonetheless. We're in the positive. Hey. Insected will need energy so I can take some more energy from them. resources on tiles that could be better used Administrations to planetary capitals. That is going to help. And I need to unlock cruisers to make sure I don't get behind in the military game. stations that I could be building. But I just can't afford them.
Okay, upgrade the ships a bit more. Um, add the second hyperdrive to them. Second tier hyperdrive. Make them move a bit faster, which will be useful, particularly if I'm going to be going to the other side of uh, of the galaxy if I want to fight the Agarians who've just expanded. I'm building shipyards, building solar panel networks on my shipyards. The reason I'm building shipyards is so that I can build solar, more solar panel networks. Militarily, I may as well be expanding through other means. Oh, we found the impact ruins of an orbital installation. Up to plus fourteen, making a profit. So you don't have an indication of unrest on the overview screen. Interesting. Civil and Confederacy has been destroyed, presumably by the, Hif uh, the Hijam Alliance. They've swallowed it up. They are big. Worryingly big. against me. Supremacy tree. Unity output increased by 10% per neighboring rival. Lovely. And that gives me a new ascension perk. So let's have a look. And the Stellar Dominion will give me a plus 25% border range. That could be useful. It'll unlock um, a whole bunch more systems that I can build in. It'll offset the border range I lost when I dropped the xenophobic trait. Uh, world Shaper, Terraforming Speed, I'm not really doing that. Technological Ascendancy, not really following that. One Vision, Governing Ethics Attraction, Unity Output, fairly useful, but Master of Nature, Clear Tile Blocker Cost. All the rest are out of reach because I don't have the requirements for them. So I'm going to do Interstellar Dominion, which increases my border range by 25%. There we go. So 
I'm building all these systems now, and there'll be some some around the edges that I didn't know before that I can now build in. Set those ships to build a whole raft more mining stations in sectors that have energy in them. I'm also building ships. I was building ships. So my fleet strength's gone again. And I've got over 4k in total. Between all my ships. Just worried about the sheer size of these guys, I have to say. And they're only allied with the Hifnars, and the Hifnars must be weak. They're probably too scared to even attack me. Because they fleet got decimated in the last war we were in. Into the blood host. Getting back on track with that economy. Feeling a lot more safe and secure about it. Large crystal fleet in that system. You're being a little too brave.
okay, I've just jumped up to 31 energy credits because that, con that uh, colony ship's gone now. That must have been quite a drain. I'll probably think about doing some research stations, which would be cool. Not doing any building upgrades that I might have available. Everyone sort of not that. The Hifnar sovereignty have declared war. They want us to stop atrocities, which would be our slavery, and humiliate us. Ah, the Hejam Alliance have joined the war with them. And the Hifnar sovereignty want to take five planets off me. So what do we want? I'm glad I just researched the cheaper war demands. See how much it'll cost to take every Hifnar sovereignty planet. So that will wipe the Hifnar Sovereignty off the map. So what do we want from the Hedrons? So we've got planets in the Ginium system. We'll take that. This is the closest system to us. And those are my counter demands. Ho ho! This is going to be one hell of a war. The war to end all wars. Well, I ran over time as well. So I'm going to have to say that that's the end of the episode. So I did say at the beginning that it might start, uh, start the war process this episode. And I kind of got distracted with rebuilding my economy. But it happened anyway. Uh, it just didn't happen on my terms. So I'm against two opponents, one of which is inferior to me in terms of both fleet power and naval capacity. But according to the game, the Hifnars are equipped, uh, sorry, the Hejams are equivalent. So the two of them together could be a formidable four. And when the game says equivalent, there could be a long, wide range there, so they could possibly be stronger than me. Um, if they've got cruisers, I may be in trouble because my fleet is entirely consistent of destroyers on the basis that the last war I fought there were only destroyers and corvettes being fielded across the galaxy. I don't have cruisers yet. I'll have them soon. At least we're on a decent war footing. I'll start the next episode, try and spam out some corvettes, maybe send uh, some unmanned science ships in the Hejam and Hifnar space to see if I can scope out how big their fleets are. Concern is that I'm fighting a war on two fronts. My fleet's over on this side of my space. So if the Hifna hit me hard from this side, it's going to take me a long time to get over there. And I probably won't be able to split my fleet. It's probably not a strong enough fleet for that. So this could be... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not confident enough to say that I'm definitely going to win this war. But if I do win this war... I wipe out the Hifnars and take a small chunk out of the Hijama lines. And then I can push my way through the Sildaris and the Agarians while we're in the uh, forced peace period. 
and that will bring us pretty close to achieving ultimate victory in this game. Well, well, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate uh, the the few viewers that that we do have on this channel. So let us know what you think of the videos, and I look forward to uh, I look forward to the next episode. And I hope you're looking forward to it too. Right, cheers, everyone.